Greetings, all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends. A warm welcome to all of you from your pastor, Yanni. In the secret place, we are now in Psalm 122, belonging to the body of Christ. And our key verse for today is, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Corporate worship is something that can easily be neglected, especially in a mobile society where one has no identity with a local congregation. Even when we live in a community for years, the worship and preaching may become routine and be taken for granted. We tend to rationalize that our relationship with God is a personal thing and we don't have to partic participate in a church to be nurtured in our faith. However, when one is born again, the scripture teaches us that the Holy Spirit within us draws us together into a fellowship with other believers. We are the body of Christ in the world today. As a collective group of believers, we are to worship, to witness, and to carry on the ministry of Christ. Also, God has created the church for the purpose of our growth in discipleship and the Word, that we might be encouraged and strengthened in our walk with the Lord. Too many people look on church attendance and participation from the perspective of whether or not they get anything from it. The worship service may not be stimulating, and the sermon may be boring. So we rationalize that it doesn't do us any good. We may consider the people who attended to be hypocrites, or whose lives do not reflect what they profess on the Sundays. But we must remember that it is not about the style of worship, the sermon, or other people, but our relationship with God and worshiping of Him. Our focus should be on Him, and regular participation in corporate worship is essential to maintaining the focus of our daily lives. You can read this in Hebrews, a letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 24 to 25, and it says, Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as it the habit of some, but encouraging one another. We must not consume to a self-centered perspective on church mem uh, membership and attendance as if it is about us and what we get out of it. We have an obligation to others. The church is a context for us to encourage and minister to others that we all might live out our faith in the world more effectively. The tribes of Israel looked forward with rejoicing to occasions for going up to Jerusalem to worship at the temple, the house of the Lord. It was a testimony for them that they belonged to God and reflected a thankful heart. It was an acknowledgement of what God had done for them. We are encouraged to pray for the peace of Jerusalem with the promise that those who love and seek the good of the city will prosper and or will prosper and be blessed. The context of blessing the place where God was worshipped in biblical times has been distorted by many evangelicals to support the current political regime of Israel, while Israel is God's chosen people, and he has promised to deal with them uniquely in a special dispensation. You can read that in Rome 9 and 11, and I mean by this, the chapters. That does not justify 
allegiance to a godless, secular government that restricts the proclamation of the gospel. The only way for Israel to know peace is to know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And our prayer for Jerusalem should be that Israelis and Jews everywhere would come to know him as Savior and their Messiah. Not that God would bless and protect them politically. Come with me in my prayer moment. Lord, thank you for the privilege of corporate worship. I pray that I would have a proper attitude about participation in church, that it would be an experience of meeting you, a time of personal renewal and expression of ministry to others. This is a very, very beautiful insight as we are the body of Christ and as we have to have our attitude in our personal worship and fellowship with our Lord. But indeed, like we read, like I read to you the, the biblical instruction, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaken our own assembly together. It's very important to encourage one another because consider this, we have a lot of churches in this world, yes? And it's from so many different denominations. We have so many names that we cannot even remember all those names, what people give to their own church or assembly, whatever you call it. But let us come to this understanding. It is just one body. And that is why it is so important. And sometimes, yes, we live from afar to go to our church. Some people have to drive an hour, an hour and a half to go to their community. Some are very lonely in the area because they are not easily con with uh, contact with them because maybe of a different understanding of what Christ is to them or a different uh, constitutional thing. But let well, us not be judgmental on that because this is not the place to be. But consider all those things. It's so important to encourage one another. And even if you're lonely, there's still so much to do. Because your mission is the place where you are. We don't have to go to a foreign country to do our mission. Our mission is called as a mother, or a parent, a grandparent, or whatever. Working with youth, working with your own family. It's all in God's place. It's all in God's creation. So don't feel discouraged when you are for, far from or don't have much contact with other churches. I know that it's sometimes lonely and it's like you don't feel accepted. And maybe it can be because of your different uh, church. So, my beautiful people, stay close to your God. Worship your God when you're home. Whatever you do, give Him from your adoration, the fellowship, what it belongs to. Because we are just one body. And we are the body of Christ. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. And consider the place where you are. And your personal worship is very important to your personal God. This is your Pastor Yeti. I love you guys. Bye.